Alright, so welcome to my very first video on this channel. So today I'm going to be making a alien themed resin shaker. I'm very excited about it. I'm going to be using a new way to color resin. I'm going to be using powdered pigment today, which I've never done before, and I'm using a new mold as well. So some new things for me in this video. But this channel will be slightly different. I plan on having it be slightly different than typical resin channels. It's not just going to be focused on resin art. The actual video content, what you see, will be me doing resin, but some videos may have me talking about something unrelated over it as the audio. So it'll be kind of like a combination of a resin art channel and a commentary channel, I suppose. Some commentary channels that you might have seen before that have a speed draw as the actual video, but the audio is then discussing whatever the topic of the video is. That'll probably be how some of them go. Some of them will just be actual, like, watch me resin, and some of them will just be, you know, me doing an actual tutorial and talking about what I'm doing. But this one in particular, audio will be me discussing something important and that I think really needs to be discussed and that I want to talk about um so if you don't want to listen to me talk you just want to watch the resin mute me go ahead I am not gonna be offended uh if you just want to listen to me talk about what I'm talking about and you don't care about watching me resin then don't look you can just listen I suppose Again, I'm not offended, but I am going to give a content and trigger warning for the audio on this video. The topic that I will be discussing today involves sexual assault. If that is a triggering topic for you and you do not want to listen to that, mute or click off this video, please. Alright? Because I will be discussing the Kim Ujin situation. Alright? I'm not going to be putting up receipts, nothing on the screen. Whatever you watch on the screen will just be me doing resin. I'm not going to be putting screenshots, nothing triggering will be on the screen. So, this is not... <laughs> this is not meant to be a super informative video. It's more me discussing the general things that have happened and my general opinion and some conclusions that and important things that I think can be drawn from it. And not that I think he's going to see this video, but just in case, for legal purposes, this is all alleged. Alright? Kim Ujin and your fake company, don't come trying to sue me. Someone who's going to get two views on this video. Alright? So, just the tiniest bit of background on Kim Ujin. He is a former member of a K-pop group called Stray Kids. Alright, and that is, I am going to bring up the group maybe twice. That is the first time I will bring them up, and I will bring them up I think one more time later, because this does not involve them. This is just the background, and it is somewhat relevant, but the other members are not involved, and so I will not be dragging them into this, because that's not what it's about. So he left the group about a year ago, I think, a little over a year ago, and we thought that he just left, but he was kicked out. JYP, the entertainment company that Stray Kids is under, completely dropped him, kicked him out, right? And we were given no reason at the time, but now we, we're, we're pretty sure we know why now, uh, because he's an abuser. And since being exposed for being an abuser, he has just dug himself an even bigger hole. So there was a thread that was posted on Twitter by a person who was sexually assaulted by him at a bar. And so this person has shared their story. And, um, but in the thread did not name names. No names <laughs> were said the person who made the thread did not explicitly say it was Kim Ujin, former Stray Kids member. What they had said was they gave like slight hints, which I understand. It's very hard for survivors of sexual assault to speak out about it because those who are due are immediately scrutinized. Very few people believe them 
and often they face worse backlash than their abusers and so I understand the um I understand the victim's reluctance to specifically name a person right and so the victim had just given was just said like ooh and then big three companies something like that you can find screenshots of the original thread elsewhere like i said i'm not putting anything up on the screen in case people just want to watch and not listen because listening would be triggering so and then so people started speculating that it was jungu of nct he was not related um fortunately and unfortunately we know that he wasn't even at near the bar the night that the victim's assault happened because i saw sign was outside his home and knew that he did not leave his home so yay for clearing his name gross for stalking him all right so kim ujin had not even been named by this person and he puts out a statement right he released a very bad statement it was not an apology it was not an attempt at an apology so i'm not calling it that it was a very bad very poorly written statement so first of all, he called the actions absurd, so he was completely dismissive of this victim coming out about their sexual assault story, you know, it's absurd, it's weird, it's so, like, out of left field, whatever, right? Like, you don't, <laughs> you take these things seriously, you are, you should not immediately be dismissive that, you know, this person was assaulted, or how, or, you know, and he appealed to his fans in it as well. He was like, you guys know that I would never do this. Like, this is absurd for someone to accuse me of this, right? He appealed to the fans because he's not trying to set things right with the victim or anything like that. He is trying to hold on to as much of the support that he has, right? And he's not sorry. Even an innocent person would express that they felt bad for the victim, right? He didn't. He was immediately dismissive of the claims, right? And then he claimed he had never met the victim or had been to the place where the assault took place. Despite the original Twitter thread not having the victim's name and not having the location in the Twitter thread. If you were innocent, you you wouldn't have said, no, I don't know them, no, I had never been there, because you don't know who the person is. The person was not named and the place was not named. So you, so at this point, you don't know if you know them. You don't know if you've been there, right? Unless you've never been anywhere in your life, then yeah, you can say that I was not in that location. Or if you've, ne- if you've never met anyone in your life, yeah, I don't know that person. I only know me and my mom. Like, but since the victim was not named, there's no way you know that you do not know them. The place was not named, so there's no way that you know that you had not been there. And there was no date either. So even if you had been there, like, you couldn't even deny I wasn't there then because no date was mentioned either. It was recently, but no specific date was mentioned. So he also, it was like five sentences maybe, also promoted his future solo activities in the statement. He was like, I'm under a new company that really like understands my vision and I've been preparing solo activities and I'm really excited to share them with you. So please look forward to that. That's how he ended the statement, right? So yikes, promoting yourself in the same breath as denying a sexual assault allegation against you. Yikes, do I need to explain why that is not okay? I don't, right? We all get that. That's gross, right? Yeah. But guess what? It gets worse. So as I am recording this, it is September 9th. All of this stuff happened September 8th. I am hoping this video comes out in the next few days, the next few, in the next week at most. So it is still somewhat relevant. But even if it's not relevant, the conclusions that I draw from this, my further analysis will always be relevant. So, but the situation at hand may have, may not be the hot topic, but sexual assault is not supposed to be a trending topic. You know, this is not supposed to be something for clicks and views. This is something that is serious and is life changing. And I do really hope that the victim finds justice. But so, uh, within the same, 
So he released a statement and then kept digging himself a bigger hole. It kept getting worse. So he made a fake company. He So, he, yeah, he claimed he was under a new company. Um, he didn't name names in his statement. But I guess after that, he realized that people were going to start trying to find information about his new company. Um, and so he made a fake company. There was a Twitter for it. They were like, oh, our, we're going to protect our artist Ujin or whatever, right? And it was a fake company. They had, they had a fake Twitter. Um, it was like ten, it was called 10X Entertainment, right? So the Twitter was just made this month. A company would not have a company that is preparing solo activities for an artist, and like Ujin made it sound like it was really close to being done. Would not have just made a Twitter that had like two hundred followers. <laughs> they would have not made a Twitter like two days ago and have 200 followers if they were about to have solo activities for an artist soon. Like, that's not how that would work, right? And so, so one of the reasons why this was so unbelievable anyway is because when you, if you, if you just willingly leave JYP Entertainment, then, you know, and you, you know, leave on good terms and you don't weasel your way out of your contract or anything, you stay then you stay on good terms with the company. They're fine. They're chill with it. Like, there's quite a few artists that have left um, JYP at, on, on good terms, and they're still friends with a lot of artists from JYP. You know, they still have a career. A, there's a female soloist, I cannot come up with her name right now, who is still, like, friends <laughs> with JYP himself and recently collaborated on a song like you remain like if you leave on good terms you stay on good terms with JYP if you get kicked out you get blacklisted from the industry entirely you will not be allowed to promote on any broadcasting music shows nothing like that they do not let you have a career if you get kicked out right so there's no way, like, other entertainment companies will not pick you up. You will be blacklisted from all broadcasting shows, so you won't be able to perform anywhere. Like, you will, you are completely blacklisted from the industry if you get kicked out of JYP. Right? So the fact that an artist who is kicked out of JYP supposedly has solo activities coming at this suspiciously new uh, company is suspicious right but it gets even better the logo of this company people reverse image searched it it was for a furniture company <laughs> some random ass furniture company their logo he took it and used it for his fake company right and then this fake company claimed that they were going to be pursuing legal action you know suing the victims who had come forward because i believe another victim had came forward after that Twitter thread um so not a good look suing victims of sexual assault into silence not hey you're gross don't do that that's terrible so the hole keeps getting dug deeper with the fake company but it gets even worse there is allegedly apparently CCTV footage of him at the location mentioned by the victim so the victim came out with the location later on and there is CCTV footage of him at that location of the assault. So he said he had never been there. He was there. So that's already not good. Congrats. Hey, we you're fully caught in a lie now. Wow, that entire statement what already was bad completely falling apart. But it gets worse. So, like I said, I was only going to bring up his former group uh, twice. This is the second time I'm bringing them up because he brought them up. So, he continued to use Stray Kids' name to coerce women to sleep with him even after he was kicked out. Like, it would have been bad if he did not, had done that in the group as well. Obviously, he might have. I wouldn't be surprised coercing women into sleeping with you by using your fame and your power and your status as an idol and celebrity over them is bad even 
whether you're in the group, out of the group, it doesn't matter. It's bad, right? It's gross and it's an abuse of power. And he was doing that. He was still using Strike as his name to get to coerce women to sleeping with him. And so that brings me on to probably one of the wildest things that has come out. This man got a fan site pregnant. If you're not 100 percent up to date on what fan sites are, they are a fan who decides to dedicate their entire life to one idol. They follow them to every single schedule that they have, every single official like promotion, that kind of thing that they have. And they take pictures, they upload these pictures to Twitter, and they make their money to afford to do this kind of lifestyle by selling um like prints of the photos that they take or photo books or other kind of merch with photos of the idol that they have taken, right? And so he got one of his fan sites pregnant yikes right like like that is a complete abuse of power even if they were both consenting adults there's an inherent power imbalance that makes that gross (laughs) like straight up it is an abuse of his power because he was he was an idol and so he was able to hold that over this fan site Like this person who had dedicated their entire life to him and to following him and to taking pictures of him. Like, of course she would, like, want to, you know, sleep with him, right? That Like, that's a complete, the inherent power imbalance between a fan and a celebrity never ends well if you try to make that into a romantic relationship of sorts. Especially in the K-pop industry when idols are so far removed. From fans when it comes to things like that like if you're a fan of a really small musician or something like that like that like they have like you know 10,000 <laughs> subscribers on YouTube and that's where they they just put like post covers or whatever and you DM them one day and you're like hey I really like your stuff like I've been following you for a while and they're like hey thanks great and then you become like friends or whatever like that's not so far removed you can still and kind of, sort of be peers there but when it's a fan a diehard fan and an idol, especially in the K-pop industry, where you where they are so far removed and they are put up on this pedestal and they are separated from the general population and, you know, placed, you know, way above their fans in terms of power. Like that is there is never going to be a situation where that's okay, where they where that inherent power imbalance wouldn't affect the relationship at all and wouldn't, you know, it would always give me pause no matter what. Like, like if you had casually listened to the group's music before, and then you just happened to meet one of the members, and you're like, hey, I listen to your music, it's pretty good, you seem like a cool dude, that's fine. But a fan site, someone who has dedicated time, effort, money constantly into this person, has made them their entire life, that is not healthy. That is not the beginnings of a healthy relationship, and he clearly used his power over her to coerce her into sleeping with him and she got pregnant now we have no further information to my knowledge as to um if she's still pregnant um if she had the baby his if she did have the baby his involvement in the baby's life I hope it's none involvement in the baby's life considering he's a terrible person but That's all I know. It's bad. It's gross. It's stinky. He's gross. And so this brings me on to the bigger point that I wanted to discuss, which is fan idol relationships. I already touched on this when I said that in the K-pop industry, idols are so far removed from their fans. They're so far put above the general population and their fans. And, you know, it's expected that, you know, fans will dedicate their entire lives to this idol and in return, you know, the idol will never get into a romantic relationship, right? They give fake ownership of the idol to their fans so that the fans will create a stronger bond with that idol while still removing that idol away from them and giving the idol inherently all the power in the relationship, right? And, like, the people that I have seen defending Ujin being like, oh, like, I, he, there's no proof or, like, he could never do this. Like, I am so betrayed. Like, I, I can't believe he would do this. And the parasocial relationships created and fostered by the K-pop industry have really rotted y'all's brains. Like, idols are just that. 
idols. They're celebrities. Like, you cannot comment on the content of their character just from the little bit that we get. And most of that is a persona. For most idols, they are, especially, like, new ones, like, rookie ones, they are given a persona at debut that they have to keep up, right? Or they only show you the good parts of themselves. Like, you do not actually know an idol. Like, I don't care if you know their blood type, their height, their weight, where they were born, every sibling that they have, like... You do not know them as a human being. Just because they sing good, or they're pretty, or they can dance, does not mean that they are a good person. And just because they post selfies, and you buy their albums, does not mean that you have any sort of personal relationship with them. And especially when it comes to allegations of sexual assault, you have to tuck that away. You have to put away any bias that you have towards them and believe the victim because you cannot comment on the care on the content of their character as a fan you do not know them you cannot defend them when you do not know what they do in their free time you do not know how their mind works you do not know any terrible things about them right you just know what they want you to see and what their company wants you to see like, at the end of the day, idols are just people, and people can be bad. And it, does, it doesn't matter how much time, energy, tears, money you have invested in them. When they get allegations of sexual assault, when they, when they get serious accusations against them, when they get allegations of sexual assault against them, you drop them. You do not wait around and see if there's any proof because the amount of false accusations are so few and far between and the incredible stigma created around them and the scrutiny created around them to try to find like anything that oh yeah this is false this is false makes actual sexual assault survivors reluctant to come out they don't want to face that ridicule that it rit- They don't want to face that ridicule. They don't want to face that scrutiny, right? It's harder for people to actually talk about it. And like, oh, it's going to ruin their life. Like, first of all, Ujin's dug himself such a big hole at this point. There's no way he's climbing out of it. And that's on him. He did it to himself. We did not do that. No one else did that. He did with his fake company and getting a fan sign pregnant and all this bad stuff that he's done. So... So here's the thing. I have never seen cancel culture work. Not once. Not a one. I have never seen cancel culture work a one time. Maybe Bill Cosby. I don't know. He's in jail. (laughs) Is the criminal justice system cancel culture? I don't think so. But I have never seen fake allegations actually ruin someone's life. I've never seen real allegations actually ruin someone's life. Like, the current president of the United States has sexual assault allegations against him. And he's the president of the United States. And those came out before he was president, while he was in the process of campaigning. I'm sorry, that does not ruin anyone's life. You got worms for brains, you got worms for brains. The parasocial relationship created and fostered by the K-pop industry has rotted y'all's brains. You need to take a step back from these people. I'm like, I understand. I am very much in quite a few K-pop fandoms. I am a content creator in K-pop fandoms. But I also understand how to have a healthy fan idol relationship and take a step back and understand that it's not real. It's not that deep. You don't actually know these people. Like, yes, it's very comforting to have them. There's definitely been times where just, you know, watching videos of some of my favorite groups or whatever have definitely helped me or, you know, some of them have said some very, you know, genuine, nice words, things like that, and like more low-key times, like live streams or whatever where nothing was scripted or pushed or edited by their company like yes some idols do seem like genuinely good people and obviously you don't want to assume assume the worst about anyone but if something comes out about them you have to be able to push that away all right like you just have to you have to understand that these these people are not your friends 
at the end of the day, sure, they may like singing, and then they like dancing, and they like rapping, even though <laughs> idol rapping is a conversation for another day. Like, they may like performing and all that kind of stuff, but at the end of the day, they don't care about you individually. They care about you as a number. They don't care about you as a person. Like, they might be like, obviously, you know, how, am I gonna, how do I want to word this? Obviously, if they are a good person, they're going to care about human beings, right? They're, they're not going to want you to like, you know, they're going to want what's best for you. But at the end of the day, this is their career. Their career is being marketable. Their career is being the kind of person that you would want to support. Their career is getting your money. So, and once they have it, that is the end of the transaction. Everything they do is to, yeah, connect with fans because if fans feel no connection to the idols, they will not support them financially as much. They might still, right? Like, I know plenty of people who have <laughs> never interacted with Lady Gaga, but they're still out here buying Chromatica, right? But, you know, K-pop idols, they do bubble, which makes it look like you have a text message from them. Or, um, gosh, what else do they do? Or they do men pause on Twitter. They do mention parties on Twitter. Um, like, that kind of stuff. And they really try, the companies especially, really try to make it seem like you have a personal relationship with them when you don't. You don't. And I think it's very important that people learn how to back up and remove themselves from situations and, you know, remove and don't take things personally when shit like this happens. Like I said before, it doesn't matter how much time, money, energy, tears you wasted on them. I literally had, up until yesterday when I found out about this, I had a Miro album that was signed by Ujin on display, proudly on display in my dorm room. And guess what I did with that? I took it down. I have replaced it with uh, photo cards of idols who have not been accused of sexual assault. And um, while I still like the album that I have and I did not want to throw it away because I felt as though that would have been a waste of my money, I did not want to proudly display my signature from Ujin. I went through the entire photo book with a whole roll of washi tape and I just I blacked out his face I blacked out his name everything I completely I essentially completely removed him from there so maybe I should have thrown it away at least the CD I would like to throw away because you he touched that and he's gross but I didn't continue displaying it I didn't I like after I did that I even took it away it's at the bottom of one of my drawers and all my other Stray Kids albums are not with me in my dorm. So when I, whenever I go home next, I will probably be doing the same treatment to anything that has him in it. I will be blocking him out. And, and I've already purged every single social media account where he might have been mentioned. I have purged every mention of him. And that's how you deal with things. You take a step back. You're like, hey, this is a bad person. I don't want someone to even possibly think I could support them. All right? You take a step back. You delete them. And you hope and pray that the victims find justice and comfort and closure. And so, to conclude, I would rather believe a liar then support an abuser. If you would rather support an abuser than believe a liar, do not interact. Block, get off my page, get off my channel, get off my video, do not comment. I will delete any comment in support of him. I doubt I will get many comments on this video. I will doubt many people see this video, but if I see anyone in support of him on this video, your comment will be deleted, it will be blocked.
if I can do that on YouTube, you will be blocked. You'll be blacked with whatever I can do to keep you away from me. So I am recording this the day after I first recorded my audio. So I'm recording this on September 10th, and I am now seeing things that Ujun was not only sexually abusing women, but he was physically and or emotionally abusing his members as well. And I've already established that he's a bad person. I am trying to be as calm as possible right now because I cannot believe that people like this exist. And it makes me so angry and so sad for all of the people he's hurt. The victims who have come forward, for his former members who can't say anything for whatever reason. And I just, I had to add this in. And obviously, physically abusing people is bad. I don't have to tell anyone that. Emotionally abusing people, verbally abusing people, abusing people is bad. Kim Ujin is a piece of shit. And I I feel like I'm going to throw up at this point. I just... That's all I had to add in. I just wanted to make sure that I had that this video was somewhat I just I I wanted to make sure that this video was somewhat comprehensive and that with new things coming to light they were added in as well so this was as up to date as it could be by the time it's released so yes that was that was the first video a very heavy topic, but it was something that I wanted to get off of my chest. Um, I am recording the audio. I'm recording this audio af right after I poured the shaker. So I hope that it turned out well. I hope that I have enough footage for how long I have ranted on and on and on. And I hope you guys consider liking and subscribing. And I know I said that if you're here to support Ujin, I don't want you to comment, and I, I super don't. Um, but if you want to have a discussion, if you want to discuss this further, um, feel free to leave a comment. So this will get like two views, so I will absolutely see your comment if you do leave one. Uh, did I already say like and subscribe? If I didn't, uh, if you like the video, like the video. And if you want to you know, see what else I do in the future, subscribe. If you really want to see what else I do in the future, subscribe and hit the bell. So I hope you guys liked it and I will see you. Well, I won't see you and you won't even see me, but another video will be out sometime.